Alberto Santos Dumont had to fly. He had become an expert balloonist. The Brazilian thrilled many Parisians with his ballooning exhibitions. Some of the balloons he had designed and manufactured himself, like the one he carried in his briefcase. You see, Santos Dumont understood the limitations of balloon flight. He could control the up and the down, but the wind, he controlled all the other directions. The diminutive son of the Brazilian coffee magnate needed to do what the wind did, control the balloon's flight in any direction, or build a powered aircraft that could be controlled in all directions. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, France had become the epicenter of men trying to fly. That is, to take to the sky in a heavier-than-air machine controlled by a pilot. This aircraft would later be known as an airplane. Santos Dumont was a tireless experimenter. He referred to his airships only by number. The balloons he designed had a different shape. The balloon or gas envelope was shaped like a sausage with pointed ends and the basket for the pilot was placed inside a wooden framework, which also housed a small gasoline engine. The Brazilian was the first to place a gasoline engine in an airship. That engine turned a large propeller, mounted tractor style on the front of the gondola. That engine and propeller supplied forward motion to the craft. The addition of the rudder gave Santos Dumont the ability to steer the airship. Alberto Santos Dumont designed, constructed, and flew this powered aircraft. This type of craft became known as the dirigible. One of these dirigibles was so small that Santos Dumont used it as his personal vehicle. Can you imagine the excitement of seeing the diminutive aeronaut land his craft in front of your palatial country estate or in front of his favorite restaurant downtown. Ever the competitor, Santos Dumont entered the competition for the prestigious Duch Prize. Henri Duch, the king of oil in Europe, posted a prize of 100,000 francs to be awarded to the aeronaut who could fly from Park St. Cloud to the Eiffel Tower. These were the regulations. The aircraft must be able to fly to the Eiffel Tower, round the monument, and return to the place of ascent in no more than 30 minutes, without stops, a total of 11 kilometers, under the eyes of the commission from the Aero Club de France, convened at least one day in advance. This required an average speed of 22 kilometers per hour. Upon the announcement of this contest, Santos Dumont began frantically building an airship for this competition. It would be number four. Unfortunately, number four crashed during testing. Construction began on another. Fortunately, at this time, Santos Dumont had a large hangar for construction and storage of his airships. Also, he had the ability to generate hydrogen gas on site. Hydrogen was the lighter-than-air gas used to lift the dirigibles. Needless to say, airship number five did not include the features that led to the demise of number four. This aircraft began the competition but started to lose gas before reaching the Eiffel Tower. It began to descend and was caught by the side of a large hotel. After being rescued by a local fireman, Santos Dumont began work on airship number six the very next day. The closing date for the Duch Prize was approaching rapidly. This airship was larger than number five and of course had improvements. The specifications were as follows. It was 108 feet long, that's the length of two semi-trucks, and 20 feet in diameter. The envelope was of varnished silk, and the craft was powered by a 12-horsepower engine amidships linked to a two-bladed pusher propeller. The pilot's basket was on the bow. 
The two previous attempts had resulted in crashes, but Santos discouraged the flight of number six almost uneventful, except that the engine surprisingly stopped in mid-flight. The intrepid aeronaut left his position at the bow of the craft, threw caution to the wind, and crawled back to the engine and restarted it. It is debatable whether he finished in the time allotted or not. But Henri Douche agreed that he had won the prize. Pandemonium reigned in the streets of Paris, and La Petite Aeronaut was the hero of the day. October 19, 1901. The Brazilian aeronaut realized that the dream of true flight would only become re reality with a heavier than air flying machine. He set to work on such a craft, and in 1906, he achieved that goal. The 14 Bis was an interesting appearing aircraft. It was ungainly in appearance, and was nicknamed the Bird of Prey. The aircraft looked like a collection of box kites that had a 38-foot wingspan. It was powered by a 50-horsepower V8 engine. The six-foot propeller pushed it through the air. Ungainly though it was, it flew. It was a first flight of a heavier-than-air flying machine witnessed by a crowd, photographed, and recorded as a motion picture. When Wilbur Wright gave a demonstration flight in France in 1908, Santos Dumont acknowledged the superior aircraft. He began to design and build an aircraft like no other, but then somewhat like one we have today. He would build and fly his personal aircraft and fulfill his dreams of flight. That was number 19. It became known as the Demoiselle. The name can mean either a young girl or a damselfly. It was the ultimate in personal transportation in 1907. The aircraft frame was made of strong, lightweight bamboo with a 17-foot wingspan and a cruciform tail covered with brilliant yellow Japanese silk. The tractor-mounted propeller turned by a small gasoline engine mounted in the center of the leading edge of the wing supplied the forward motion. The pilot sat below the wing in a seat fashioned between two bicycle wheels. The tiny craft weighed only 242 pounds with a top speed of over 50 miles per hour, which, by the way, was much faster than the current light flyer. One of the many unique features of the aircraft was that it could be partially disassembled for transport on a small truck. It did have some misgivings, though. According to some, it was difficult to fly. Santos Dumont himself complained that he could not check the time on his pocket watch while flying. However, the famous jeweler, Louis Cordier, solved the problem by designing a wristwatch for him. The Cartier Santos watch is still available today. On his visit to America, Santos Dumont allowed plans of the Demoiselle to be published in Popular Mechanics magazine in 1910. The Brazilian did not patent any of his discoveries or inventions. The creation of the ultralight aircraft was a peak of Alberto Santos' life as an aviation pioneer. Ultralight Demoiselle is the model for the modern ultralight aircraft. A personal flying machine easily maintained and flown and within the reach of the average person. With the advent of World War I, Santos Dumont witnessed the horror of some of his contributions to aviation being used for the destruction of mankind. He returned to his native Brazil and lived out the rest of his life as a semi-recluse. Thanks for watching this video. 
Don't forget to subscribe and share the video with your friends. A thumbs up helps my channel grow too. Other videos are available as you can check out my playlist as well as what's coming up next.